Wheels have undergone arguably the biggest evolution of any bike component in the last 30 years. And while the basic principle remains the same, you know, like round, spoked, pneumatic tyre, there has been an awful lot going on to get us from this to this. But what was this exactly? This was the high performance wheel for everyone. Whether you're a club cyclist, road racer, or time trialist. Now, it's an aluminium box section rim with 32 stainless steel spokes and, as you can see, a tubular tyre that was glued onto the rim. Now, all these component parts were sourced from different locations and most likely the wheel would have been built by a local wheel builder of which there were many artisans at the time. And while aerodynamics was something that certain far-sighted individuals were looking at back in the early 80s, it was a long, long way off making an impact in road races. The focus of these wheels was lightweight. And these are an impressively light, well not that one, the front one, 1,135 grams with a tyre on. So that's only a couple of hundred grams heavier than today's modern carbon efforts. And you think the shallowness of the rim is striking. And what about the narrowness? Of these tyres. Now, although it's not marked on the side, these are around 19 to 20 millimetres. We've had to pump them up to about 120 psi to avoid pinch flats. Do you think, Matt, that 11 speed DI2 will accept a 7 speed block? That is incredibly a dual race block. I think it might run on about one or two cogs, as I like to use, but I'll tell you what, let's give it a go. I think you should ride them, Matt. Yeah. Good luck. Now you might think that this super skinny and very hard tyre would make for uncomfortable riding and you'd be right. But when you add into the mix the super light aluminium rim and the 28 spokes, it's actually quite flexy and makes for a comfortable ride. Now that's not great for power transfer but also not as bad as you might think and it is really quite comfortable. And remember, when you think about the fact that these tyres would be matched up with a steel frame with equally skinny tubing, also makes for a very comfortable ride. And, notably, my Shimano 7-speed block is meshing reasonably well with my DI2. Who knew? So how did we get from that to this? Well, there are two main reasons. The first was the embracing of aerodynamics, which triggered an arms race of finding efficiencies through the wind. And the next was the development of carbon technology, which pretty much revolutionised bikes. And the two things are inextricably linked. Now, disc wheels weren't exactly new in the 80s. Apparently, in fact, they were nearly 100 years old by then. But it was in 1984, the US Olympic track team were widely credited with bringing them to public consciousness. Well, actually, Francesco Moser's our record bike had them the year before. But it wasn't until the late 90s that what we now know as deep section carbon wheels became ubiquitous in the pro peloton. Well, they were actually there from the mid 90s, bringing aerodynamic gains to everyday situations for one or two far-sighted individuals. And it's funny, isn't it? You can't imagine a modern day race bike without deep section wheels now. Carbon rims are much stiffer now, which means the spoke count can be reduced to 16, which is actually the minimum UCI limit, something about people not getting their head caught in between the spokes. Definitely can't do that, but... but... <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to do that! <laughs> that seems okay, but uh, certainly an admirable aim if ever there was one. Interestingly, you know, this stiffness uh, that can be built into carbon fibre at low weights, perhaps more for frames rather than just rims, has also brought about another change, and that is wider tyres. Now, you see, a wider tyre obviously has a greater volume of air in it, which means that you can run lower pressures for increased comfort while still also maintaining your puncture resistance. And then, wider tyres has therefore led to wider rims as people have tried to maintain the aerodynamic efficiencies of that wheel. In fact, tyres have got much, much wider from 20 mil to 25 mil for most professional riders now and in fact many do actually use 28. Now the wide rim does actually change the profile of clincher tyres and that gives far better traction in corners too. Bringing clinchers to carbon rims was the next stage in the evolution but it wasn't as easy 
as you may think, because of the heat buildup on many carbon rims during sustained braking. Now, whilst many pros choose tubulars for weight and roller resistance, clinches have now narrowed the performance gap right down. And in fact, some clinches are outstripping the best tubulars in rolling resistance tests. We have come a long way then, haven't we? Yeah. Modern deep section aerodynamic carbon wheels can save you two minutes over shallow aluminium wheels in what is now kind of the industry standard 40 kilometer time trial. And in my own high performance experiment, I doubled the length of time that I was able to sustain what had been my maximum speed whilst riding aluminium clinches. And while weight hasn't come down massively, strength has increased proportionally. So we now get really robust, super lightweight wheels. I must admit though, Si, I'm liking these beauties. It's kind of fitting, isn't it? It is. Although actually they're older than your cycling career, aren't they? Well, they're definitely older than the man filming this bit of video. <laughs> That's for sure. Perhaps even more interesting though is where the evolution of wheel technology is going to take us next because the advent of disc brakes on road bikes is opening up all sorts of really exciting new avenues for development. Yeah, we spoke to Paul Lou, Head of Innovation and Technology at Reynolds Wheels to see what the next step is and he's pretty well placed to speculate on that because he's kind of already there. Yeah, so apparently by removing the brake track from rims it's going to be possible to create a rim that's significantly more aerodynamic than a standard rim brake rim. Aerodynamic enough, in fact, to offset the disadvantage of having a disc rotor and a caliper, which are thought to be quite costly for pure speed. About two watts just for the rotor, zero degrees of yaw, and then the caliper adds even more than that. Yeah, but surprisingly, actually getting rid of the brake track doesn't save that much weight at all. Now, we can't speculate on what the next design will look like in relation to a super aero disc specific rim, but we've had a go. I mean, it's unofficial, but both Simon and myself have had a look at what we think it might look like in the future. Simon, talk us through your... Well, so that's obviously a current uh, aerodynamic rim, that's the tyre, and this is going to be my new super aero disc rim. I've gone for a figure of eight. Well, not much you can say about that. I've gone for a quite aggressive design. That's the tyre just sort of, I call it the diamond. I bet you do. But Paul Lou, if you're watching, I sincerely hope you are. Please get in touch with me and Simon. We can have a chat about patents. You, you're going to sell that? I... I think it's too good to sell to me. I might just keep it to myself. Yeah. Now, we mentioned earlier about efficiencies of tubular tyres and clincher tyres. If you want to see a video on exactly what tyre choice you should make, then we've got one just up there. Or to see a video about whether disc brakes are suitable for the Pro Peloton, you can get through to that just down there. And to subscribe to GCN, how about clicking on Simon's brand new, innovative, and I think it could possibly be the future, figure of eight, deep section, disc brake only, rim design which is copyrighted so you know you can click on it you just can't copy it don't copy it it's, it's not worth it i love the word canopy i like the word canopy as well oh god i'm really feeling hungry now i don't like canopies though. No, don't you? well they don't really fill you up do they not really you know when it's quiet everything else seems loud it's like the birds and the little it's just great love it nature okay <clears throat> something about people not getting their head caught in between the spokes. Definitely can't do that, but... but... <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to do that! <laughs> I'm at the tie now, I'm so sorry. Oh, 